Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome back to Gathering the Magic. And today we have another deck tech and this time it is Narset Enlightened Master, who is a 3-2 first strike hexproof. And whenever it attacks, you exile the top four cards of your library and until end of turn, you can cast non-creature cards exiled with Narset without paying their mana costs. Okay, and the first thing we've got here are loads of mana rocks. I'll flip through them, nothing really in key particular to mention. But as you might have seen the card that was just below all of these rocks, there is a reason why we carry all of this extra mana. Now, this isn't my deck. In fact, it is my girlfriend's deck. But among our playgroup, it is one of the strongest decks around. And I will explain a bit more why as we get later in. Of course, here we have the Soul Ring and the classic Thran Dynamo Commander Staples. So the game plan for Narset really is simple. You want to use that ability and just get out those four cards. Hope they're really, really big, strong cards. Annoy the hell out of your opponents, cause chaos and ultimately win the game, which this deck has done plenty of times. So we've got Armageddon here to destroy all lands. Omniscience, which is really, really key in this deck. Start play this for free with Narset's ability and then you can cast any spell from your hand without paying your mana cost. These, these next few cards are really game game enders. Aminatu's Augury, exile the top eight cards of your library. And for each non-land card, you can cast it without paying its mana cost. Again, this deck is filled with instants and sorceries. And one card that isn't English, because uh, <laughs> when she made this deck, she bought this card off Card Market. And uh, yeah, forgot to change the language. So this, uh, yeah, Leyline of Anticipation. I'll put the actual cards uh, side by side if you do need it. And Approach of the Second Sun for another win con there. If you cast it twice, basically, you win the game. Um, yeah, a ridiculous, ridiculous card with nice little horns of Nicol Bolas shining through there. And obviously another thing we want to flash in with Narset's ability is the chance for extra turns. So there are plenty of extra turns in this deck. So again, you can keep attacking with Narset. You can keep doing that four card trick. And yeah, here we go. Loads of different cards, Temporal Sundering, really common card for Commander. And it is so cheap as well to, to buy, as well as to play if you use Narset. Beacon of Tomorrows and Part the Water Veil. Extra turn madness. And this deck is absolutely stacked with instants and sorceries because there are so many ways to benefit from instants and sorceries. We've got loads of cards that let you copy instants and sorceries. So again, you create more of all of these, whether it's creatures, there's lots of creature cards that are, well, creature sorceries to get out creatures, which you'll see shortly later on. Copy instant and sorcery and another copy instant or sorcery and for some instant or sorceries here, we've got a few extra combat phase instant or sorceries because you wanna attack with Narset as much as possible. So yeah, again, untap, untap Narset, attack again, untap Narset, attack again, keep these triggers going and going and going. As I said, it's my girlfriend's deck and the best way to describe this deck is is organized mess or organized chaos because when you look at it and i will put the list on moxfield for you to look at after there is almost so much going on with this deck almost you could say too much but it just works everything syncs together so well and it's just it just pops off like crazy i think this this deck has a very very high win loss ratio in our in our play group and uh yeah as we go through you can see why so here we've got a very thin pile for creatures, but again, a lot of these creatures are inst instants or sorcery. So you can be using them twice, two, three times if you've got those instant or sorcery doublers. So again, Stormherd, ridiculous card to play, especially if you play it for free with Narset. Imagine creating 40 one, one flying white Pegasus, Pegasi, Pegasus. Yeah, this deck is just disgusting. Disgusting! Yeah, Talrand there. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2 2 blue flying Drake. So, again, yeah, here we go. Another Righteous Confluence. Another Righteous Confluence? It's just the one Righteous Confluence. Uh, yeah, here you can create 2 2 Knights. Uh, Kaikar. Again, whenever you cast a non creature spell, you're creating more creatures. 
empty the Warrens, create two 1-1 one, one red goblins. Crackling Drake, another really powerful boy that can get stronger and stronger. It's a uh, power and its power is equal to the total number of instants and sorceries you own in exile and in your graveyard. And then we've got Scourge of Gaia Reach. It gets plus one plus one for each creature your opponents control. So if your opponent's getting that wide army, Scourge is getting big. Uh, Forbidden Friendship, just nice little early game starter. Create a dinosaur and human soldier. Uh, Goblin Electromancer, get those instants and sorcery spells, which again, there are loads of, get them cheaper. And Increasing Devotion, 5-1-1 human creatures. Again, you can flash back and use it again, but create even more. And the last sort of creature maker we've got, again, another sorcery, is Shram's Expertise. Create three one one colorless servo uh, artifact creature tokens. And next up we have a load of Planeswalkers. We're going mini super friends here. And they all do different things, but all help out. So here we have Ral Zarek that can give you up to five extra turns, which just syncs up with Narset so well. And then we've got Narset herself, Narset Seption. Uh, with that ultimate emblem, your opponents cast, can't cast non-creature spells. So this deck is kind of a bit staxy as well. It's really gonna stop your opponents from doing stuff. And yeah, really, really, really annoying, but but fun to play against sort of deck. It's it's the kind of deck that you you almost find yourself teaming up to try and beat before Narset gets too powerful and then just starts kicking off. Uh, yeah, Ajani, that, again, that emblem that uh, prevents all but one damage, which is crazy. Dovin Barn, again, another emblem. Your opponents can't untap more than two permanents during their untap step. So that's lands included, ridiculous. And Chandra, another emblem. Whenever you cast a spell, this emblem deals five damage to any target. That is just crazy. Okay, now we've got counter spells and removal. So we've got a few white removal here. Cleansing Nova, destroy all creatures or artifacts and enchantments. Single combat, uh, yeah, was very common when it was in standard before War of the Spark was removed. And then we've got Divine Reckoning. Again, choose a creature and then destroy the rest. And then we've just got loads, loads of counter spells, which again, can just get really annoying because, you know, if a deck's got at least 10 counter spells at one time or another, they're definitely gonna have one in their hand. You're gonna not wanna attack them in fear of it being, or in fear of something being countered. So yeah, this is very, very good for politics, knowing that they're probably gonna have one of these in their back pocket. And is it charm being the last one where you can counter or deal a bit of damage or draw some cards? Okay, and the last little stack before the lands is just tutors and the rest. So we've got mystical tutor here. Uh, and then we've got another long term plans. Search library for a card. Don't even have to reveal it, put it third from the top. And then we've just got the rest, other cards that are in this deck that do work really well. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card, which is just about any card in this deck. Mahiri's Machinations, uh, giving one of your creatures indestructible, which again, give Nasa indestructible. She's just gonna stick around and keep going. Righteousness, a one drop white, which gives plus seven, plus seven to a blocking creature, just ridiculous. And of course, Swiftfoot Boots, protect Narset, keep her alive at all costs. So we'll finish up just flicking through the lands now so you can see what is in this deck. Like I said, this this deck is just, it's just crazy. There's so much going on, but it just, it syncs up like I've never seen a deck sync up before. It's absolutely crazy. You're gonna get extra turns, extra combat phases. The second you have enough mana to play Narset, and if she stays on the battlefield to attack, you know that it's probably just gonna be game over because you're gonna get absolutely overwhelmed, which I have learnt firsthand many, many times. So yeah, Mountain. As for mana, it's it's kind of, if you had to pick one, it's probably slightly more blue than anything else. And then with an even splashing of white and red, Temple of Epiphany. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's a really strong deck. And I will, like I said, put it on Moxfield. Evolving Wilds, Moorland Haunt, and Prav Spires of Order to finish off. But yeah, there we go. That is another deck tech. This time, not my own, but uh, 
but my girlfriends. And if you did enjoy it, there are a few more decks that we've got lying about the house. We have got Cal time coming up very soon, which I am so excited for. Hopefully a booster box video coming this Saturday. But for now, I am all tapped out. So I'll see you in the next video.